All right, we're looking at the iodine clock reaction. And what we want to do here when we look at our iodine clock reaction is we want to figure out what the rate law is. So in order to understand what the rate law is, we have to understand what exactly it means. The rate law is the concentration dependence. And it asks us how fast this reaction occurs when we consider the concentration of iodide and the concentration of peroxide. And we always write our rate law as rate is equal to some proportionality constant k, which we call the rate constant, multiplied by the stuff that we're going to be looking at changing, which is iodide. And we don't know how the rate is going to be. So we're going to raise it to some unknown value x, and we're going to do the same thing and multiply by the concentration of peroxide raised to the y. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to take and we're going to mix these guys together. We're going to put a little acid in to make it work better, and we're going to make some iodine. And to figure out how much, um, when our reaction is done, we put in some starch. Now, as soon as this stuff starts to react, our iodine starts to react with peroxide, it makes iodine. The iodine reacts with the starch and it goes blue black. Which at this point is only going to tell us that what we have is iodide and peroxide making starch. It doesn't tell us how long it takes. In order to tell how long it takes, we have to figure out how much of something reacts. Now, the species we're going to monitor is going to be iodine. Now, we're going to define rate as the change in concentration of the iodine that is produced over the change in time that it takes. Time is going to come off of the stopwatch. Concentration is going to be moles of iodine that react or are produced divided by the volume in liters of the solution that we are using. Now, because this solution and the iodide or excuse me, iodine that's in the solution reacts with starch. The second that iodine is produced, it makes it blue-black. That really doesn't tell us very much. We need to put in a time delay. And we're going to put in a time delay by adding a tiny bit of thiosulfate. How much is the tiny bit? Well, if we do our math, we can get that we have 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of thiosulfate that we are adding. That's going to be the volume of the thiosulfate in um, liters multiplied by its molarity. So we're going to put a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. That's a lot less than the original amounts of anything else. Now, the relationship between thiosulfate and iodine is 2 to 1. So by the time it takes all the thiosulfate to react, we will have produced and then reacted 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of iodine. That is the amount of iodine that is reacted by the time it takes all the thiosulfate to go away, and then the reaction produces this iodine in excess, which reacts with the starch and goes blue-black. It's a little short time delay. Our rate is going to be the change of this iodine over time, which is going to be 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5 moles. Now we need the volume in liters, so we need the total volume of this solution. So how do we get that? Total volume in the solution we are going to add up all of those volumes there. When we do that, we're going to find the volume of the solution is consistent at 42.5 milliliters or 0.0425 liters. Now, note we are making some changes, but here if we take and we are going to be reducing our concentrations in two different spots, in run three, we're going to have the concentration of the iodide and in run two, we are going to have the concentration of peroxide. Now, to keep the solution volume constant, we add a little bit of, in this case, some um, potassium chloride here to make the volume of this thing constant. So what is this going to do it for us? We now know the moles of our solution, uh, moles of the iodine that are produced, 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5 moles, and the volume of the solution, 0 0.0425 liters. So what can we do with this? Well, we can take and get our rate. If we go back and look at our math for our initial concentrations, the initial concentration of the iodide was 0 0.018 molar for run 1. It is the same for run 2, and it's halved for one th run 3. Now, peroxide is 0 0.018 molar for run 1. It is halved for one, run 2, 0 0.0088, and it's gone back to the original concentration, 0 0.018 molar for one, run 3. I have no idea why my pen is doing that. All right, so if we take a look at this, we can see some relationships. We can see that here our iodide is the same 
and our concentration of the peroxide here goes down by half. Now, if our rate depends on the amount, if we have half, of, half as much, it should take at least twice as long for the reaction to occur, twice as long as the stuff to get there to react if there's half as much to begin with. So our reaction time, if we go to the lab using the student's data, I have 16.42 seconds for this one, 32.4, obviously used your data, and 32.66 seconds. So what is my rate? Well, my re rate is going to be the moles of the iodine, 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5 moles. That is going to be the amount of iodine that is removed by the thiosulfate. And when the thiosulfate is gone, the iodine will be in excess and the color will change to blue-black. So that's going to be the moles of iodine reacted. And the volume is going to be 0 0.0425 liters. We need molarity. And that's going to work out when we take and do our math here of 2.94 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. Our rate here is going to be consistent. It's always going to be 2.94 times 10 to the minus 4 molar divided by the time. When I divide here by the time, it's going to be 16.42 seconds. We're going to get 2.94 times 10 to the minus 4 molar divided by 16.42 seconds for run 3. And I'm just skipping run two for no particular good reason. That's 2.94 times 10 to the minus 4 molar divided by the time that it took, which is 32.66 seconds. All right, so that is going to be our rate. And again, I remember for every run that we do, our molarity of iodine that is reacted or um, removed by the thiosulfate, our change here is going to be 2.94 times 10 to the minus 4 molar for the iodine for every single one of these runs. So what are we going to do with this? Well, we want to see how the rate, which is how long the reaction takes, is going to depend on the concentration. And for example, if we're going to do it for the iodide, we're going to do it for the peroxide. Unfortunately, we've got a whole bunch of stuff in the solution, so we've got to be a little clever. And this is called the method of initial rates. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the ratios of the rate at run one over the rate at run two. And when we're also going to go and take the ratio of the rate at run one over the ratio of the rate at run three. Now, why are we going to do those? We're going to do those because those will hold one of the concentrations, either iodide or peroxide constant, allowing us to see how the rate changes with the other one. So what do we know? We know that our rate here, our rate law, is equal to K times iodide dx times peroxide to the y. If we take the rate at 1 over the rate here of 3, and I'm going to do this one for no particularly good reason, I'm going to look at the values I get. And the number I got for the rate at run 1 was 1 1.79 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. Run 3 would be 9.00 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. Now that's going to equal K multiplied by the concentration of iodide at run 1, that's 0 0.018 molar, and that's raised to the x. And if I look at it at run 3, I have halved it at run 3, so that's 0 0.0088 molar, and that's still raised to the x. Now peroxide was constant in that run, and that's 0 0.018 over 0 0.018, and peroxide is raised to the y. Now why does that help? Well, this helps a lot because I've removed our proportionality constant K, and I've removed the concentration of peroxide because peroxide is not changing. I'm going to take and do the math here. When I do the math here, I get 1.99 for that ratio. And when I look at the ratio of the concentrations, because they're raised to the same power, I can put them together here and get 0 0.018 divided by 0 0.0088 raised to the X. This is 2, and I get 1.99 is equal to 2 to the x. x by inspection is 1. All right, you're going to do the same thing for peroxide, and you're going to do that by taking the ratio of the rates at run 1 over run 2. Why did I put run 1 on the top? Because it's larger, and it's going to give me whole numbers rather than fractions, which I really prefer. This reaction should be 1 to 1, so when you're done, you should get 1 to 1. But when you get to right here, 
round x to the nearest whole number. So these should be rounded to the nearest whole number. When you're done and you have your rate, you're going to take for each run, you're going to plug in your rate that you get for that run is equal to k multiplied by the concentrations of iodine. Whatever value of x and y you get, you're going to plug in. And when you finish that, rate is a known, concentrations are known, you can solve for k. Once you have solved for k, you're going to average the three k's together, and you're going to get k average for this reaction. 